Get ready for a wild ride because today we're diving into a theory that's really shaking things up in physics. Self-contained nature, or SCN. And the best part is we're getting a behind-the-scenes look, like a sneak peek at a scientific revolution. You know? Yeah. We're diving into actual research excerpts and conversations from the physicists who are building this theory. I love that. Okay, so no pressure. But these physicists are basically trying to rewrite the law of physics, right? Where do they even begin with something that big? Well, they start by ditching something most of us take for granted. You ready for this? They diss the idea of space-time as this smooth, continuous thing. Whoa, okay, already hooked. Right. So how does SCN rethink space-time then? Instead of smooth and continuous, imagine a universe built on, well, think of it like a massive chessboard. Each square is a discrete state, and there are a ton of them, a mind-boggling number, but still finite. Okay, I think I'm starting to get the picture. So instead of this smooth flow of time, it's more like dot snapshots, like the universe is jumping between these distinct states. You got it. Perfect analogy. Uh -huh. It's like the difference between a classic film reel and a digital movie. SCN says the universe is digital, existing in one specific state at a time, like a single frame in that movie. So no smooth transitions just jumps between these frames. What determines which frame the universe jumps to next? Is it random? It's not totally random. This is where things get really interesting. They call it a mapping function. And basically this function assigns probabilities to different state transitions. So it's guiding the universe's evolution in a way. Mapping function. Okay, I have to be honest, that sounds incredibly complex for something that's supposed to explain the entire universe. And yet, it's that blend of complexity and elegance that makes SEN so compelling. Imagine this function is a cosmic algorithm constantly calculating the probabilities of leaping from one state to another, guiding this incredible cosmic dance of chance and probability. I like that, a cosmic dance. That makes it easier to picture. But here's the thing. If we're jumping between distinct states, how do we explain the smooth, continuous reality we experience? I mean, I don't feel myself jumping through cosmic frames. And that's the mind-blowing part. As CN says, our experience of space and time, that feeling of continuity, might be an emergent property. It emerges from these underlying discrete states. Okay, so space and time as we know them, just illusions. That's a lot to take in. How does SCN even begin to explain how those concepts emerge from a universe of, like you said, cosmic movie frames? It's all about the relationships between the states. Think of it like a giant network. Each state is a node, and the connections between them, those are the potential transitions the universe can make. So space isn't an empty backdrop. It's a web of connections between these states. And what about time? Where does time fit into this web? Time in this model reflects the sequence of those state transitions, not a continuous flow, but more like a measure of the jumps between states. It's the order of the frames, not how long each frame lasts. So time isn't really about how long something takes, but about the order of these cosmic snapshots. That is seriously different from how we usually think about time. Right. And it opens up these really profound questions about change, causality, even the very nature of reality. But what's even wilder is that SCN tries to explain more than just space and time. It goes after gravity, too, all within this framework of states and probabilities. Wait, are you saying that gravity, the force that like holds us to this planet, comes from this cosmic dance of states? How is that even possible? It's one of the most exciting things about SCN, I think. The theory suggests what we call gravity arises from how these discrete states interact, how they affect the probabilities of other states. Okay, slow down for a second. How can something as fundamental as gravity be like a side effect of probabilities? Picture this. You've got a state representing a massive object, like our sun. In SCN, that state has a kind of gravitational influence, but it's not a force in the traditional sense. It influences the probabilities of nearby states, making them more likely to transition to states that are closer together. So it's not that the sun is pulling things towards it, it's that it's making it more likely for nearby states to cluster close to it, like a cosmic game of chance. Exactly. Think of it like loaded dice, maybe. In this case, the massive object is loading the dice, making certain outcomes more likely. Those outcomes are the arrangements of those states. And that bias, that loading of the dice, that's what we perceive as gravity. Wow, that's a wild way to think about it. But if this is right, if this is how it works, that means some of the most basic ideas we have about physics, about the universe, about reality, hmm. they're not quite right, are they? Space, time, gravity, all emergent properties of this system. And that's just the beginning. Our sources suggest SCN might have even bigger implications, like a cyclical universe. 
maybe even a universe where the speed of light isn't constant. Whoa, now you're really blowing my mind. We'll have to dig into those ideas more. All right, so we've established that SCN has some pretty mind-blowing things to say about space, time, gravity, even reality itself. But before we completely lose ourselves in the weeds, let's circle back to those cosmic mysteries we touched on earlier. You mentioned dark energy and dark matter. Right. Two of the biggest head scratchers in cosmology. Yeah. Even with everything we do know about physics, these phenomena are still shrouded in mystery, you know? Totally. So let's start with dark energy. This is supposedly what's driving the accelerating expansion of the universe, right? Exactly. Problem is, nobody really knows what it is, what it's made of, how it works. Okay, so what does SCN have to say about this mysterious force? Does it have an explanation? Well, here's where it gets really interesting. SCN suggests that maybe, just maybe, we've been thinking about dark energy the wrong way all along. Oh, how so? Well, instead of some mysterious force pushing everything apart, it could be a natural consequence of something we already talked about. The universe's tendency to increase its entropy. So, to use you words, it's not something pushing the universe apart. It's more like the universe is trying to spread out to explore more and more possible configurations. Ex exactly. Think of it this way, okay? You drop a tiny drop of ink into a glass of water. What happens? It spreads out, right? Yeah, and doesn't stop until it's diffused throughout the entire glass. In the similar way, SEN says the universe is constantly spreading out, exploring all these possible states, maximizing entropy as it goes. Hmm. So no need for a mysterious dark energy force. It's just the universe doing its thing, naturally evolving to a state of higher entropy. Okay, I can get behind that. But what about dark matter then? That invisible stuff that's holding galaxies together? How does that fit into SCN? Well, SCN suggests that dark matter, just like dark energy, might not be a new particle or a separate force at all. Wait, really? If it's not some exotic particle, what is it in the context of SCN? Think of it this way. Remember how we talked about massive objects influencing the probabilities of nearby states and how that gives rise to what we perceive as gravity? Yeah. Well, certain configurations of those discrete states could act as a kind of stabilizing structure within the universe. They're not matter in the traditional sense, but they influence how matter clumps together, how galaxies form and move. So it's less about a thing and more about the underlying patterns, the web of connections between states. And those patterns are what create this, like, scaffolding that holds galaxies together. Exactly. It's not about adding new ingredients to the universe, but about understanding the hidden patterns, the interactions already present within this network of states. And that's what's so cool about SCN. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't just try to patch up the holes in our current theories. It's offering a totally new framework, a whole different way of thinking about the cosmos. It's like we've been trying to solve a puzzle by forcing the wrong pieces together. And SCN swoops in and says, hey, maybe the picture is totally different. And we're just getting started. Believe it or not, our sources say SCN has even more radical implications. Things like a cyclical universe. A cyclical universe? You mean like the universe expands and contracts over and over again? That's one way to think about it. Yeah. And maybe some of the constants we thought were, well, constant, aren't so constant after all. Wait, hold on. Are you talking about the speed of light? How could the speed of light not be constant? Let's unpack those ideas after a quick break. Okay, so we're back and my mind is officially blown. Cyclical universes, a speed limit that isn't so limited. SCN is giving us a lot to think about. It really is, isn't it? Uh -huh. I mean, the power of theoretical physics is that it lets us explore all these possibilities, even if they sound like something straight out of science fiction. I know, right? But as much as I love a good mind-bending theory, we have to ask the practical questions too. Like, how well does SCN actually hold up against reality? You're hitting on a crucial point. Yeah. It's one thing to have a beautiful, elegant theory on paper, but it has to match up with what we observe, what we see in the real world. Exactly. So how does SCN measure up? Give it to me straight. What's the report card look like? Well, it's definitely still early days, and there's a lot more work to be done. But even now, one of SCN's biggest strengths is its elegance and simplicity. You know, it manages to explain so much with relatively few starting assumptions. And that's a good thing in physics, right? Simpler is usually better. Exactly. Remember that famous saying, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. SCN seems to embody that idea. Plus, it goes right at some of those big, thorny problems that have been bugging physicists for decades. Are you talking about the whole quantum mechanics versus general relativity thing? Because, yeah, those two don't seem to play well together, even though they both describe different aspects of the universe. It's like the physics equivalent of trying to mix oil and water. 
Yeah, it's like the two pillars of modern physics just refuse to share a foundation. And people have been trying to reconcile them for ages. And, well, it's been tough going. But SCN might have a solution because it tackles those issues head on. Oh, okay. How so? So both quantum mechanics and general relativity, they kind of fall apart when things get super extreme. Like crazy small and unbelievably dense. You know what I mean? Think black holes. I'm getting tiny just thinking about it. So the theories basically break down. Pretty much. They start spitting out these nonsensical answers, infinities popping up everywhere. That tells us something isn't quite right. But because SCN starts with the idea of discrete states, it actually avoids some of those mathematical traps that trip up the other theories. So it's like SCN has these built-in safeguards against those theoretical crashes. Exactly. Yeah. It's like it's got a built-in safety net. It offers a new way to think about the very essence of space-time, where those extreme conditions don't cause the same kind of mathematical mayhem. Okay, now that is impressive, but you did say it's early days. What are some of the, let's call them challenges, that SCN still needs to overcome before it can really compete with the heavyweights like string theory or loop quantum gravity? You make a good point. Well, one of the biggest hurdles is that right now SCN is mostly a conceptual model. It needs that solid mathematical backing. So they need to translate these amazing ideas into like equations and formulas, things you can actually use to make predictions. Right. To really put SEN to the test, physicists need that precise mathematical language. That's the only way to make predictions that can be tested against real world observations and experiments. Because at the end of the day, the universe speaks to us through data, right? We need those concrete predictions from the theory to check against what we're actually seeing. Absolutely. And that's where things get particularly tricky. SCN has to show how these statistical averages, the ones we talked about earlier with probabilities and all that, how those averages can lead to the incredibly precise predictions we already get from general relativity. I imagine that's no easy feat. It's like recreating a perfect replica of the Mona Lisa, but you can only use a handful of brushstrokes. Yeah, a pretty good analogy. It requires a deep, deep understanding of how those individual brushstrokes, or in SCN's case, those state transitions, all come together to create the big picture. And SCN still needs to fill in a lot of those details on the mathematical canvas, so to speak. So, a lot of work ahead. But even so, it seems like SCN has already accomplished something pretty incredible. It sparked a new conversation, a whole new way of looking at the universe and some of its biggest mysteries. And that's what's really exciting. Whether SCN ends up being the final answer or just a stepping stone to an even more fundamental theory, it reminds us that there's still so much out there to discover. That the pursuit of knowledge, the quest to understand the universe, is an ongoing journey. Well said. And on that note, we've come to the end of our deep dive into self-contained nature. We've journeyed to the very frontiers of physics, explored some radical ideas, and maybe even come out the other side with more questions than answers. But those questions, that sense of wonder, that's what keeps us going. Absolutely. So until next time, keep asking those big questions, keep your mind open to new possibilities, and most importantly, never stop exploring the mysteries of the universe. <laughs>